moving from Minneapolis to Chicago now. So okay. I, I, that was what I was going to say, but right. the future is here. That's improvement. That's improvement. Love to hear that. Okay. All right. Well, welcome back to the booth after the uh, draft feature, the feature draft from the Cheese Stands Alone Exhibition Cube here at KubeCon. Uh, it is Thursday evening, the first day of the ex the exhibition of the convention proper. We are going to go down to the feature match, and it is Tim Myers up against Mike Villan. Bylan? Your guess is as good as mine. Okay, and it looks like Tim is on the play. We have seen the players shuffle up already. Mike Steck, by the way, had a look at it, and this is much more of a, a multicolor monstrosity. Yeah, four color, kind of big mana deck, uh, not black four color. Mm -hmm. Tim, of course, this Orzov deck, and he did get all of those uncastable boom booms in the spread. So he's trying to animate okay. the, the Avenger of Zendikar. Let's go. <laughs> we are on for Reanimator. Here is, oh, that's the... Uh, the Millikin. Mil the Millikin. He's on Lion. Okay. All right. So we're going to... Gonna maybe see some milling here from Tim trying to find some reanimated targets. Lotus Cobra on too, though, for Mike. That's a scary start. Between Millikan and Lotus Cobra, I think the Cobra's better with the <laughs> Zen Avenger of Zendikar. But uh, the Millikan going to work. Sadly, milling Bitter Triumph. He would have Ouch. liked to have dropped that, Wait. just kill this Cobra. Yeah, that would have been nice. But stop the Storyteller. That's a nice, uh, nice. Draw. It's a spirit token there. Can turn that into a card with this counter. He's going to do that right away. Um, you saw the quick activation of the Millikan. Not a lot going on for Tim just yet. We'll see how explosive the Cobra is, but uh, I like Mike's side of things so far. Yeah, Mike does get to untap with the Lotus Cobra. Here comes a land and some mana being floated. And a spread of different colored lands, as well as the Cobra making mana of any color. You kind of see what happened with Tim's mana base here with Plains Plains Swamp. It's not clear even if he has Yawgmoth, if he could cast it next turn. All right, here is something that looks like one of those Simic experiments gone wrong. It is the Goose Mother. <laughs> it's a wholesome fairy tale creature. Yeah, Bird Hydra. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that one from... Uh, from you know the Disney version. It's a Although classic it's, Aesop's fable. That's it is. It does have a Brothers Grimm thing going on about it. Yeah, it I'll is kind of horrific now that you mention it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> was that Blood Artist that we just milled? It was. All the good ones going away for Tim. Yeah, this is how. This is also what happens to me when I mill myself. Right. Like I know it. It should. We've all been there. But it does. This mother's going to come in, and when it attacks, that is going to let Mike sacrifice the food to draw a card. Yeah, uh, Tim just passing there with five mana. You kind of wonder if some of those uncastable cards are stuck in hand. He, he so quickly drew with the staff. Right. You know he's looking for some help, and this is a chance that Mike has to really compound his advantage. Right. So did the Avenger make it in then? It did. Oh, yeah, yeah. and Bonnie Paul. Okay, all right. And, okay. Uh, you know, we're milling over Blood Artist. I'm willing to bet at least one of those cards is in the hand. <laughs> and this one, uh, is that Jet Me? Uh, he has two no, of the three colors. That's the Teamer one. That's the team it's like one. Biz Bob or something. Uh, <laughs> Genuinely cannot tell if that was a real attempt at saying. I think it was the thing gimbal. Was, it was just a gimbal. Of course, it was gimbal. It was gimbal. Did Gremlin Geyer and gimbal prodigy. in the wave? So now we know Ryan was just making some sounds, I still hoping, am. hoping that that matched up with what was happening. A Jabberwocky reference. Okay, all right. Ooh. Got to get the culture in. Here is necromancy for Bonnie Paul, and you said it could not happen. Now, now we're cooking. Okay, that's. It's happening. So here's the question: which 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 is stronger, Bonnie Paul or Gimbal? Well, we are gonna find out. Tim is gonna start off by making uh, the the ox, the bow, the blue ox, which is uh, the size of the number of lands you have. And whenever you attack, you get to draw a card. So yeah, that's gonna generate some value over time for Tim. This, this turn is looking a lot better than last turn. And right. Yeah, that's the reason that you play the, the off-color reanimator targets is you can start to come back. You know, taking a full turn off with five mana, it's unfortunate, but this is a way you can make up that value. So yeah. it cuts both ways. 
I mean, this is why we do it, right? <laughs> to <laughs> live know? the dream. To live the dream. Got to, got to feel things. <laughs> that's why. That's why I play Q. Anyway. That's why many people play Q. Yeah. All right. We're going back over to Mike. And he's got problems. Could I try and solve this uh, this bunny pole problem? Yeah, it's large. You know, uh, Mike's list is a lot of big mana stuff and high impact cards. Not really much in the way of removal, as I recall looking at the list. Um, I'm right. going to be honest here. I'm going to need Gimbal's okay. text here. You know, I'll, I'll help you out here. Gimbal, five mana, two and teamer. Artifact creatures you can drop trample. T the classic teamer artifact card. <laughs> At the beginning of your end step, you make a zero zero gremlin, but then you put X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is the number of differently named artifact tokens. This card is weaker than Bonnie Paul. Okay. Wow. I've officially made my assessment. Didn't even wait for the end of the sentence. This card is weaker than but Bonnie Paul. Yes. It doesn't seem like Tim has that many. There was a food token that got sacrificed to the Goose Mother's ability. And here is, is that Primeval That's Primeval title? Titan. Okay. So we're going to get big here. So Balan, so there is a Field of the Dead in the cube. It's not in Balan's deck. He didn't okay. get it. Okay. Like, Sam Black was at the table. Unfortunate. Okay. <laughs> this is just going to find some lands. Like, you see there's a Horizon land in play. He's got a little bit of utility like that. There's a Surveil land. But this is just going to fix the mana. You know, currently doesn't have a white land. Right. And, I mean, both of these players just really gumming up the ground with a lot of these big creatures, Primetime, Bo, Bonnie Paul himself. The fight being a little bit in the air here, it seems, Ryan. Yeah, uh, currently the, uh, the Goose Mother is the, is the damage source for Mike. Not the, the fastest clock. No, I mean, it's not... There's no Hydroid Crisis, right? Like, it just doesn't really have the same uh, size presence on the battlefield, but I mean, Tim's just got a spirit in the air. Yeah, the, uh, the real big thing going on here is that Bonnie Paul. Um, you know, the, the Ox token is 6-6, six, six, so the Primeval Titan is a real thing to contend with. Right. Okay. But one more land, that changes. Of course, you know, Balan can double block. Right, and Mike is going to use that two mana floating from the lands coming in, plus tap two creatures convoke out the Conclave Tribunal, so thinking about whether he's going to target Bonnie Paul here or the Necromancy. Maybe. I think some confirmation on what happens when Necromancy is removed. You know, mm. if, if that exiles the Bonnie Paul, then great. Mm. Otherwise, you know, maybe you just exile the, the target itself. It's very minor in either direction. Uh, it, it doesn't exile. Right, either. you just sacrifice it. Right. So, it's interesting. I mean, does Tim have more ways to deal with enchantments in his deck, or does he have more ways of getting the Bonnie Paul back? I guess, yeah, I'm mean, saying, uh, like, that's probably the, the consideration, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Bonnie Paul is going under the tribunal, so Bo does get left behind, though. Now it's feeling really unfortunate that Tim milled that bitter triumph, because <laughs> that Primeval Titan is just gigantic now. You know, the Bonnie yeah. Paul is gone. The well, ox is a little managed. But the ox is, but the ox is gonna get bigger every time Tim plays a lot. That's true. Will it get bigger in a capacity that matters against these gimbal tokens? Right. Mm. The primeval titan is hanging back on block. You toss a token into there, and you can just trade with the ox. Right. In that equation, that's just kind of a holding pattern. Right. Um, and Tim's gonna miss a land drop at some point. Okay. Yeah, well, he's gonna mill. That's a scrub land in the graveyard. Does have a pretty full hand though. And, you know, that turn when he passed with five mana, maybe he's been holding on to Oblivion Ring. Okay. To start to equalize the battlefield in that way. Well, let's see what Tim has got going on here. Counts the mana, which against the reanimated deck, you do not want to see them count. <laughs> <laughs> like, hmm. You know, if this was a cube that had your Gristlebrands, your Archons, that would be very scary. But there's mm. no <laughs> number of black mana that casts Avenger of Zendikar. <laughs> you heard it here not first. Not with that attitude, <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> Well, something is going on there. Um, oh, here is Harvester of Misery finally getting that Lotus Cobra off the battlefield. Lotus Cobra has been there since the turn beginning. <laughs> right on time, the turn seven answer to the Lotus Cobra. 
okay. I mean, this is this is an engine, right? Yeah. We've got asthma. We've got the cookbook. If Tim is holding Avenger of Zendikar, that can get put in the graveyard. Yeah, being able to drum up that discard outlet is nice. Only one more way to bring it back, the animate dev. Mm -hmm. Another card that could have been in hand that turn when he passed with all the mana. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is Tim cooking? We'll find out. He's prepping. He's prepping. Oh, is he? Tim's the, yeah, the meal prep. A little mise en place at this you know, point. I don't, think, I don't think Asma is the meal prep type. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> she doesn't seem like she's got the, you know, all the Tupperwares and, and whatnot. No. A little bit more of a Borborygmos meat and eggs we eat. Mike's in a fetch. There's, there's a fetch land. Oh, yeah. There's Other people have them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tim just doesn't. Mike has all the mana. As much mana as you could ever want. Yeah, I mean, in this cube, with, with the mana curve going up to six or seven mostly. Primeval Titan uh, kind of mm. doing a just, you know, just, just, just a 6 6 trampler with a little bit of value. Are there any, other than Field of the Dead, do we have any kind of primetime stuff going well, on? Well, he tutored up Commercial District, which is really about as good as it gets. Is that a simulation oh. Aegis? This is nice. All right, I was saying Balan doesn't have much removal, but when it comes to removal, this is choice. You get to Oblivion Ring something, and you get this equipment that makes creatures a copy of it. But you don't get... Creatures don't get to be a copy of that. Oh, do they? Do they get to become a copy of both? Uh, I believe that that's what the players are asking right now. What does your heart tell you? My heart tells me that you can't. I guess I'll have to one target creature. Whenever it becomes a to creature... That card becomes a copy of a creature card mm. exiled. I'm not Tokens sure. are not creature yeah, card. That's, that's not, not going to work. Yeah. Answering the bow makes sense. It's not as exciting as I wanted it to be. No. No, but we can't always get what we want. No. We can always swing in with the team, though. See, the Aegis would have been a better answer to the Bonnie Paul. Right. Maybe. Yeah, maybe, but Tim's going to back it up. This is a pretty good attack anyway. Yeah, that bow was really the last thing standing between Tim and defeat there. Mike is taking this one down, although, you know, Tim got to do some stuff, right? Like, the reanimation did happen. We're going to go straight into game number two here. And uh, Mike's off with a great start yet again. Birds of Paradise on one. What have you got, Tim? That's kind of what I was talking about with using Animate Dead on turn 5, turn 6. Balan's just like, alright, here's my Lotus Cobra. I'm going to cast my stuff as fast as you cheated out. Mm. And with a little bit of interaction, it looked pretty easy for him to cross the finish line. Right, it's going to be a Surveil Land, putting a land in the graveyard for Mike. Back over to Tim. Has the cookbook ready? Turn 1, discard outlet, no discard. We are not rolled up on Animate Dead. Ooh. Here's the discard though, Lingering Souls in the bin. That is a nice one. And we're going to see Tim cast it straight away. Busted. Love it. Makes a food as well, of course. No white mana for Tim? No. And uh, that would be the reason to wait on that cookbook until his turn. He would like mm. to have just played planes and cast Lingering Souls, right. but the draw looks a little short of functional to this point. Oh, this is a great way to smooth out your draw, though, for Mike. Champion of Wits. We talked a little bit about this card when we were you know, previewing the cube earlier, Ryan. And um, just really does everything. Yeah. Smooth your draws here. Nice thing to come out of the graveyard later. And with this mana wrap stuff going on, you see the Birds of Paradise in play. It's a deck with Primeval Titan, Lotus Cobra. Mm. You get, you'll get to seven mana. Right. You'll be able to eternalize that one. Did you ever play uh, God Pharaoh's Gift? Uh, I played more Scarab Gods, mm. but I've cast a lot of Champion of Wits. Yeah, that's a, that, was my, that was my first set. Amon Cat, Hour of Devastation. So really holds a place in my heart, Champion of Wits. Lingering Souls, they're coming in. Yeah, but they're the third land is not. Oh. That's bad news for Team Myers. Yeah, this is not the way you want it to go, but, you know, at least this cube, you know, for the more competitive-minded cubers out there, this one isn't part of the uh, the main event. It is just an exhibition match. Well, Felidar Retreat into land, though, for Mike. How quickly we have become dismissive of the Charcuberie board. <laughs> I would never. 
I have never. All right, Felidar Retreat. So this is actually, you were asking about Primeval Titan finding utility lands. Mm. This is actually the Primeval Titan combo in the okay. deck. Control Felidar Retreat and put lands into play. God. That was such a busted card in that limited format. I mean, it was only retail limited, of course, Ryan, so... <laughs> You know, it doesn't even, it barely even counts, but... This card saw standard play, you know, yeah, arguably Omnath did a, some of the work. Arguably. Are you, or Lotus Cobra also some, was some pretty Some might good. say <laughs> that Omnath <laughs> was the thing. Here comes another one of the three color cards. Here's our Naya Chairman. I don't know what we actually call the Streets of New Capenna. You know, the Ravnica has guild leaders. It's a... Mob leader, mob, mob man, <laughs> Jetmir the mob man has arrived. Wow, they should hire you to name cards. They should. Yeah, I wonder why they don't. <laughs> <laughs> Jetmir does give all of your creatures vigilance, or at least all your other creatures. Maybe even himself. Yeah, Jetmir gives all your creatures vigilance. Once your battlefield's already established, Jetmir adds a lot here. So much power on the battlefield connecting the Felder Retreat, given some mm -hmm. counters as well. Balan's closing speed is quick. All right, and Tim? You know, discard Grave Crawler to Cookbook. Okay. It's cool. It's a combo. I like it. That's, come on, I, that's got across the I, line. <laughs> <laughs> Just shuffling across the line. It's going to be close. <laughs> <laughs> That would be sick on, you know, turn one. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, look, Tim found a plane, so there's hope. There's light <laughs> at the end of the tunnel. There's a lot of problems, though, to deal with. It, the kind side. of the issue is, even if Tim has Oblivion Ring, the Jet Mirror and the Felidar Retreat Ooh. kind of pumps the squad. This is good. Okay. Swords of Plowshares answers the Jet Mirror. Yeah. But the Retreat is still hanging out. The counters are still on the creatures, and it's going to generate more value as the game progresses. All right, so... Oh, Tim's just having to pass the turn back. I wonder what's in his hand. And it is awkward, right? Like, you were talking about this earlier, this exile removal, like, it's not great if Tim's holding something like an animate dead. Mm -hmm. Would have loved to see that jet me on his side of the battlefield. Right. Yeah, he'll have to, like, draw his own large creatures. And, like, if he peels Bonnie Paul and already has Animate Dead in hand, right. maybe we can do something. Right. Blossoming Tortoise Ooh. with Felidar Retreat. Here's a combo. I'm calling this one a combo. <laughs> okay. Here's our line. All right. That's that's the line? This is exactly... This is officially... This is the, if you look it up in the, <laughs> the magic line. textbooks... Yes. You'll see a picture of Blossoming Tortoise next to Felidar Retreat. Okay, and that's, like... The, the lower end, lower bound <laughs> of combo. It's going to put, put counters on everything. Incremental advantage that adds a little power and toughness to the battlefield. Yeah, and all of a sudden, I mean, these Lingering Souls tokens, they're going to have to start chumping. Tim's going to take two from the Birds of Paradise coming in. We need to find something. What? We can do, I mean, like, the Harvester of Misery wouldn't even help. Honestly, Anymore. one of Meyer's best prayers there was the tortoise milling over something really good for him to reanimate. Okay. Didn't happen. What about Ophiomancer? It's okay. Uh, oh. It was okay. <laughs> Ouch. The path exile. I mean, Tim at least gets another land, but... Right, doesn't even get that death touch snake oh. and at 12. That's, like, that's got to be it, right? Yeah. That's lethal. We're already Mike so close to on. lethal if we're not already there. Yeah, we are just already there. Right. I mean, with, And if we weren't, that combo is still online. That's true. The tortoise keeps that churn going. Hadn't even been disrupted yet. I mean, Mike Balan with the four-color soup deck. <laughs> Let's say... I'm going to say a soup ramped, a lot. Like okay, a, like that's a ramp deck. Sure. Ramp the decks are kind of like categorically soup, so... Okay. All right. I'm learning a lot about... The, what words mean? When you've been magic, playing as long as I have, yeah. you know, back when Scourge back when, came uh, out. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're gonna be the Scourge <laughs> of this weekend. And um, I'm Tim, unfortunately for last year's Cube Con champion Tim, he is out. This is single elimination here at Cheese Stands Alone. We're gonna end up with one soul victor at the end who is going to be holding the cheese plate wearing the cheese hat consuming all the cheese mike still in with a shot yeah and, and mike's deck has a lot of good things going for it 
you have that Birds of Paradise and Lotus Cobra to really accelerate out your game plan. And some of his cards are pretty difficult to interact with. Mm. Uh, you get like, some fine value with Primeval Titan, but the real thing I'm looking at is that Felidar Retreat. Enchantments are generally much more difficult to answer than creatures. Mm -hmm. And like this Escape to the Wild, you see, it didn't even come up oh, in those games, but that's just I so love, much card advantage. I love Escape to the Wild. It's just one of those cards that you always wheel on Moto Vintage Draft, and I'm like, do people not know that this card that you draw for cards? It's basically do Ancestral not Recall. Know? <laughs> I just love it so much, and everyone hates it. If, yeah. Showdown of the Skulls is another one. Like, have you read this card? <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> Very similar cards, the showdown yeah. and the uh, the escape. Yeah. yeah. yeah Escapes of the Wilds, though. You know, a lot of people, we talk about, like, this Modern Horizons era of mm -hmm. magic. Mm -hmm. Draft a card from Modern Horizons. You know, Escapes of the Wilds being from Throne of Eldraine, that tells you something, too. Yeah, Throne of Eldraine busted set. Busted. <laughs> busted. Some of the, the best cards of all time mm. came from Throne of Eldraine. Trail of Crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> That's that is one of the cards. Uh, yeah. Gingerbread. Gingerbread hut. Ginger brute. Ginger brute. I was honestly my brain just blows, and I was gonna say gingerbread guy. <laughs> we, we have a card called carrot cake. How come we don't have a gingerbread just full just stop? Just gingerbread. Yeah. Yeah. It was before they fully committed to the bit. We've had two Eldraine sets. I think the third one will get it. For sure. Yeah. Or committed to the brute depending on how you look at it. Hello, welcome back to the booth. You are watching coverage from KubeCon. We just uh, had our first feature match from the Cheese Stands Alone Exhibition Cube, which uh, is kind of this fun Thursday evening thing where it's not part of the main event. They're just playing for honor and for cheese. And um, we have some, some of the best cubers, some of the best drafters in the room here. I think we mentioned Sam Black is in the pod. Luis Salvato is here. Caleb Durward as well. Yeah, Caleb, exactly. So, um, you know, plenty of magic to come. We're going to go for a quick break when we come back. More Chicago Cube in just a minute. Hey. 